Hialeia. Hi Alea. Hello, and welcome to another player profile and projection here on Talking Yanks. We're talking about Nestor Cortez. Nestor Cortez Jr. Mm. Nasty Nestor. The Highlight Kid, as Jake said. Born in 1994, huh? He's 29 years old. He was born in Cuba. A lot of people forget that. They don't remember that at all. As far as the rest of his profile, uh, this is his third stint with the Yankees. Made a name for himself in 2021 when he... Got himself a rotation spot at the end of the season. Pitched really good. And then in 2022, it was nasty. A lot of funky leg deliveries and timing devices. And then last year wasn't so great, Jake. So second stint with the Yankees. But are we calling this a third now? Because this is kind of Nestor like post-injury. Let's find out. I don't know. Just, I just read the Wikipedia and it says New York Yankees. Third stint on okay. December 20th, 2020. Cortez signed a minor league contract with the Yankees. So okay. in the wiki, wow, that's what you get here, people. So I've started all of them. Profile He's rule five bit. twice, I think. Nestor, the one they call Cortez, a Yankee favorite, man, and it's it's funny going back. Twenty nineteen, Chester. I mean, holy smokes, the and it was funny because his stats that year weren't that good, but he would, he'd give up one or two runs in three innings, and that was like all we needed. So I was like, okay, dude. Sure, knock yourself out. Um, developed into one of the best pitchers in the American League for two years. Uh, became one of baseball's like favorite stories. All star game, him and Trevi. Yep. Uh, and yeah, we're now kind of at a pivot point, Jimmer, because he he got banged up last year, and it was the weird third time through the order thing when he was healthy that. I don't know. He, he came in with the hamstring, didn't do the World Baseball Classic. There's a lot of parts you can put in the blender, and when you're talking about that, it's kind of like when you're you know, buying a car with a sunroof. Uh, the more parts you got to worry about, the more things that can go wrong. You've had problems with sunroofs? I've never had a problem with a sunroof. If I have a sunroof, it's awesome. The sun shines through it. He leases, people. Gotcha. I, I lease, yeah. I lease. I'm not, I don't care about cars. New one every three years. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Uh, Nestor has a horse named Tam Major, a uh, eight-year-old that was foaled in Australia. Bought it with Yankees assistant equipment manager. They teamed up to buy it because he's into horses and he likes that. So that's cool. Uh, Tam Major has run twice for Cortez, uh, and he's doing all right. Okay. The biggest difference between Nestor and Rodon, basically from last year to this year, we hope is that they didn't really, they started camp hurt. They never yeah. built a foundation of health uh, to build upon. And I think that's why you had the fatigue setting in. Because some people were saying the fatigue is hurting all these um, uh, pitchers around the majors that aren't in great shape. And Nestor will tell you underneath this body there is an athlete. Yeah. But there is a body there covering the athlete a little bit. I don't think that was his problem. He always pitched really fast. That was what he did. I just think he didn't have the the buildup of strength and stamina that you're supposed to get in spring. So I do like that as we're recording this on March 5th, he's one of the starting pitchers for the Yankees that has started two games, is getting innings under his belt, and building that up. And hopefully we can get there. Because until spring started, like if this was one of the episodes we recorded mm. before spring, I think my tone and tenor is a bit different. But I'm, I've seen him on the mound now. And he looks spirited, like a young horse. Tam Major A. That's full old circle. horse, old horse. That's full circle, people. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for Nestor. Um, there's a lot of things you can put in the good blender. He, again, his first two times through last year, Nestor was great, and it, it almost felt... It wasn't Monty-ish because they never gave Monty the chance, but I guess if we're going to go off that fatigue thing, not getting your legs under you from spring training, which spring training is for pitchers. Like, that's the known fact. If hitters had it their way, spring training would be like two, two weeks. weeks. 
October 11th. 1998. Parent Trap. Um, the year it came out. Nestor, his first time through the lineups, was great. Um, yeah, you pitch clock. I don't know. I mean, I, technically, it's something to watch this year. Uh, okay, the stats I was looking for. First, first time through. Okay. Get there, Jake. Just lost it again. Damn. Tough stuff. Brutal start. Um, pitches 1 through 25. Here's a similar stat. Mm-hmm. Opponents had a 529 OPS. Pitches 26 through 50. 596 OPS. Pitches 51 through 75. A 729 OPS. Okay. So there's a little bit of a leap. Pitches 76 through 100. Hitters had a 1.4 OPS. So, uh, that plus if you do days of rest, his four days between starts, hitters had an 882 OPS against them. Five days, 647, six plus, 657. So, there's a lot of signs that point to, there's a lot of signs that point to Nesta Cortez Jr. was not built up for the 2023 season. Mona Lisa Vito. I love it. I love it. So, Um, why not believe in that? No, I do believe in that. And as I told you, um, tempo-wise, I have those numbers. Tempo. He tempo. did pick up the tempo last year. He didn't really need to because he was at 15 seconds the year before. Uh, brought that to 13 seconds last year. I do think the only thing that I did notice with the pitch clock, and maybe this is just rude, rude o'clock shots fired, but I know Nestor could shoot him back at me. You know, if you watch any of our warehouse action, I can lose my breath easily. It <laughs> felt like whenever Nestor made a play, which Nestor does make plays. Yeah, like he's a fun his body, fielder. There is an athlete. High effort. Uh, it did feel like he would be on the mound just a little huffy puffy. Could be, but just that could also little... just be general, like wasn't in great right. shape. Right. Not that the pitch, and then the pitch got compounded that. I don't know. It's just nice that he's got a spring training to get under his belt here a little bit. Um, I was looking at what he's been throwing this spring so far to see if he's changing it up. He is throwing a sweeper. Um, last year he did throw that. It was his third pitch. It was fastball. It was cutter. It was sweeper. Right now he's got sweeper, four-seam fastball, cutter, and he has thrown a decent amount of change-ups mm. this spring. He did throw some last year. Um, but that's interesting. He doesn't need that. I just need him to be doing what he's doing. I think with Nestor, I always want to stay funky. Sure. Like, I remember that outing. I believe it was against the White Sox. Like, a daytime getaway day or Saturday day game against the White Sox. Was it this year or was it in 2022? That he just mowed them down. Mm. And it was like the last pitch off the mound. He went Laredo and was and was walking to the dugout before it even got there. You know what I'm talking about? I know. And that's the guy I want to see at all times. Confident. Let me see if I can find it. May tw- May 15th, Sunday, 1 o'clock start, getaway day against the White Sox. Nestor goes eight innings pitched, three hits, one earned run. So, yeah, that's the guy. Eat our shorts. We even saw it his last start last year against Houston. I like hope. Hope again. Dominguez times, Nestor times, and then he was out for the year. Um, I will say something to watch, Jim, a little W2, W4. Yeah. Righties clipped Nestor decently last year. Really? 261, 330, a 798 OPS. So Nestor was always funny because when he pitched to righties, it always felt like a cutter fest. Like it was just going to keep cutting. Or... He just stopped the fastball, and you'd almost do that like, huh? Huh? Like, him pitching to Vladdy used to be hilarious. Like, Vladdy would take the biggest swings in the world. He'd swing through it, and you were just like, okay, what was any of this? Um, Read those stats again, Buck. Careful with that. So, just to compare, if that's okay with you. Uh Uh-huh. In 2022... Yeah. Nestor Cortez held right-handed batters to a 202 batting average. Yep. 251 on base, a 590 OPS. He was really good. Okay. In 2023, 
Righties hit 261, 330, a 798 OPS. Okay. Now I'm trying to find the, the pitch that has gone awry. The pitch. On him. And last year, what do you know? It was the sweeper. Looks like the cutter got sweeper 929 slugging against versus righties. Gross. 357 batting average. And a 929 slugging. So the sweeper to righties, I don't know, maybe get it tighter or don't, don't throw it as much. Get it out of here. Yeah, cutter, 536 slugging, still not good. And those are, oh, hey, the four-seamer was still good. So figure out your second pitch to righties. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Because the sweeper the year before, pretty good to righties. Uh, the cutter. The sweeper was much better before. It still was worst pitch to righties. Yeah. I don't know, man. And the changeup was pretty decent that, that year. So I wonder if we do see some more changeups this year. I'd like that. Let's see who he's throwing his changeups to this year. Gio Urshela. He's righty. Right handed. Javi and a ba- friend. And a friend. Javi Baez. Jeter Downs made a nice play against Gio Urshela. Nice. Javi Baez is a righty. Mark Kana. We think. Is Mark Kana. Kana's righty. He's a righty, but I think of him as a lefty sometimes. He's got lefty energy personality. Uh, Justin Henry Malloy. He's right. It's all righties. He's throwing his change of righties. So maybe, yeah, maybe we do see that a little bit. I'm good with that. I'd like that. Because I think the biggest thing there is changing speeds. The four-seamer sat 92. The cutters at 87. Sweeper 77. Changeup was 83. So if you can go fastball cutter change to righties, boom. I don't need to sweep. Now the highlight kid will be starting a uh, game in Mexico City. That get his juices amped up? Is he going to get taken deep in that Mexico City game before the season Ooh. starts? Yes, but he can wash that out. He's been through a lot. You know? You know what? That's very interesting. I think last offseason was the first time where he took the offseason off. Remember? Or first COVID? Time he, first time he like didn't have to Cause, pitch cause he Because I remember people saying... Worried about his innings, and he was like, "What are you talking about? I've pitched winter league every right. like I've I always throw innings. I, go, I after minors or whatever, I go to winter league. I pitch all year round because he thought he was going to be one of those guys that has to make money by playing in leagues all the time. Right. And then last year he, I think that was a story, which is, and then he was dealing with some injuries, which is funny because then he didn't like get under. So maybe he's like, I got to stay playing. Yeah, I mean he was trying to. He's planning on going to the World Baseball Classic. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see from Nestor. You do, you know, with pitchers, sometimes if the injury bug starts to roll, it can roll. Uh, we're obviously hoping against that. And I, I guess there are a lot of things you can point to, whether it's hamstring whether it's the third time through, whether it's whatever it is that, I don't know. I, I think you can be hopeful for Nestor this year. And I, you know, him, and I. this is his PPP, but someone's going to click, question mark. Hope. More hope in Nestor wrote on this for one season, this one season. More hope in Nestor or Rodon. I, re- I, I refuse. It's tight, right? It's Nestor's PPP. Right. So Nestor's loved ones are tuning in, and they're not yeah. tuning into Rodon's. So, uh, Nestor. Um, I do like this. In one of his spring outings, um, in the second inning, swung his leg straight to center field, twisted his body, got the fly out, um, and then, like, to Akil Badu, he dropped down, went Laredo. Uh, and then in the post game, he said that Glaber was asking for it from the dugout. So, he says, so that, ki- that kind of led me to that. But, yeah, once I started doing that and it starts feeling normal, then I feel like I'm in a good spot. Remember that, people. 
when I'm like saying, Nestor, do the funky stuff, have fun. Here he is saying, yeah, when I do that, I'm feeling good. And there was periods last year where he wasn't doing, doing it. That. And you're like, come on, man. Like, get cocky. 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 We're working on that. Um, and uh, hey, how that about, was a, that was a bummer. you know, it'd be really nice, Jim, because we've done a lot of talks about spring training. Doesn't mean anything. Means something. Want it to mean something. Now I'm, now I'm thinking it means something, but it doesn't mean something. If Nestor could pick up. Yeah. First start. Will he be in Houston? It's yeah. a four gamer, right? So you'd assume Clark's the five. They they have it already. Do you want me to do it? I've been keeping track. Remember, I made a Google sheet all about it. Yeah, it's just Fangraphs does have Nestor as the five. So that's where I'm I'm curious. Nestor would be the four. That would make yeah. sense. Cole, the, Rodon, having, Stroman, Nestor. Yeah, having Stro they've already said Nestor Stroman are the Mexico City games, which lines them up for three and four with one extra day's rest, and they always go one extra day's yep. rest. And Makes then sense. they also said Stroman is pitching the home opener, so then Nestor would follow him. Uh, so his second start will be that Sunday game, or Saturday game, at the home opener series. So Jeez. Nestor will be pitching against the Astros. He will not be pitching against the Diamondbacks. As of, we, as of now, as we record this March 5th. Pick Still up. some time to shuffle. Pick up where you left off and mow down Houston again, and full-blown Nestor fever will be back. I like that. Yeah. See? No, Nestor fever um, is back. Okay. Full-blown? No. That's what I'm saying. He mows down Houston. We're full-blown. Is he good against Houston? His last start, he was nasty. Four innings. Four innings. Eight strikeouts. Four innings. Well, it was, it was one start back from first start back from a shoulder thing, so he's on a firm pitch count, and he got hurt. Hurts to miss work. So that's when he goes six, 12 strikeouts, full blown Nestor fever, pride of the Yankees. That's my ask. Pride of the Yankees, first series, Nestor Cortez. Boom. Wow. I don't know. I think yeah, that's big. I don't know if I'd, I don't, there's other guys. Yeah, but it's record day, Jim. But I mean, the Houston series prior to the Yankees, like winning record day off the jump, Nestor. Six, I'd, I'd give you, shot, I'd give you, a, I'd give you four, I'd give you four guys. What are your hands doing? I'd give you four that I that would be my ask. Like I'd include Rodon. Like if we're saying he was the one, the one that'd be great. Stanton or DJ. Like give me one of those four, and that's me feeling good. Yeah, just think on that record day, first one of the season, the four game sweep of Houston. Stand Grand Slam. Nestor mows it down. Yeah, but they were already up twelve. Are you serious? The DraftKings Sportsbook. Make sure you guys are getting in on all the action. Oh yeah, I love it. With DraftKings, they are giving you back a no sweat bet. What the H? That means if you get your bet wrong, so wrong. You get a no sweat back back in that same value. So download the DraftKings Sports app now and use promo code Yanks. Get in on the action. Random video. Oh shit, look at this. DM Coach Ball Game, a video of yourself doing push ups. This is unbelievable. Okay. Looks like Nestor Day Game and Okay. In Chicago, 0-2, Tim Anderson, two outs in the inning, and oh, you're gone. Little cut, cut, slide, Jones, tuck the chain, see you later. Wow, let me click it again. Wham, bam, Commander, thank you, Tim Anderson's going to play in Miami this year, so that's down and in. Thing. Oh, look at this. Same game, bottom one, two outs, two strikes, Jose Abreu. See ya. Wow. And, um... That was cool. <laughs> Jim, I don't like to do a lot of over-the-top stuff. Yeah. I believe in the random video gods. Yeah. Nestor Cortez, no-hitter, Chicago White Sox. When do they When do they face up? When do they face up? When do they face up, huh? Hey, when are we facing up this year? <laughs> Get away from us, buddy. <laughs> We don't want any. What was that about? What, when do they 
face up. Yeah, Nestor came over to the dugout and said, when are we facing up this year? May 17th through 19th. Okay. That well, feels right. Make that work. May 17th through 19th. Okay. Kind of getting in a groove. I don't have the rotation mapped out that much, but we'll get there. Okay. He'll be there. He's in there. When's their second time seeing them? Uh, August 12th through 14th. Ooh, that might bode a little better. They've just, like, quit on their season. They traded guys away for Chicago. And like Nestor's just Week after the heaters. deadline, it's I like full them. dead. I like, I, like, I like Nestor against a team that thinks they're good. You just kind of drop for the Blue Jays. Oh. Can't believe it. Oh, oh. Second oh. starter. All right, okay. over under um, oh. bubblegum tosses hmm. by Nestor. Is he still going to do it? I'll put it at two. God, he is good for a couple just lights out gifts, huh? Yeah. That first one with him running with the bucket, you can't replicate that. It's awesome. Yeah, no, it was really good. <laughs> it was funny. People liked it. Uh, 11. What was the question? That's the over. Where to go, Jake? Um, That's huge. 11 bubblegum tosses? Let's see. That's a season. That's 2009 all over again. Nestor dominates the Orioles. It's really good against the White Sox, 4-0. Mm-hmm. Um, Orioles, Mets. Good Rays? against the Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. Okay against the Rays. Mm-hmm. And they're going to match up. Bing, 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 bing. 